Hi, this is the advisor with Stacy Chalemi. Today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today, and it is Chris Dyer. And she is a rapid transformation specialist. And she shows you how to transform your body and actually connect with your mind, body, and soul. So she's going to tell us a little about herself, what she does. And I'm very excited to have you on the show. Everything you were telling me is just amazing. So why don't you tell our listeners a little about yourself? Thank you, Stacey. Um, it, it gives me a lot of pride to be able to come and have these conversations with people like yourself. Um, you and I were discussing how in today's culture and society, there's so much emphasis, you know, um, you know, weight loss, healthy body, wellness, that is such a hot, heavy topic right now. And what can I do? What, what specialized knowledge can I bring to the table to help make it easy for women in particular, women 40 and up, to really embrace what a healthy lifestyle looks like? Um, you know, and, and the, the fact that I'm a grandmother now and I am every woman, you know, weight goes up, weight goes down, but it, it's the, the body image and how we relate to ourselves and understanding that it really can be simplified. You know, I've, you know, in the diet culture and in the fitness world, you, you see, I've seen it and I've done it all. I've tried it all, but in three decades, that wisdom comes from the perspective of really looking at what truly does work and is sustainable right? Mm -hmm. And making peace with yourself. So yeah. you can just love yourself and give your body all that it needs. And it really isn't a whole lot. Right. Um, in our culture, we are sold a lot of things because we're a consumeristic society. Um, you know, there's a lot of businesses that, you know, spend a lot of money to put names on products that promise things that maybe there's a quick fix, mm -hmm. but when we don't undress the emotional underlying issues of really what's going on, then that's when the, the yo-yo effect takes on, or that's yeah. where we just get really uncomfortable and we really don't know where to turn. So I really want to, uh, honestly, I have purchased one of those easy buttons, like from Staples. <laughs> oh, I love like, it. I want to make it easy for everyone. And it is sort of a disruptive type of um, platform, a stage, if you will to disrupt that diet culture and, yeah. and removing the intimidation about what a healthy body actually looks like, because right. it really doesn't look like what you see on the ESPN sports magazine, right? <laughs> no, it does not. Or, or the fitness models or, or the, you know, the people that um, celebrities is like, you take a picture and that's one moment in time. Yeah. Right. That they've been doing something for weeks or months to attain a certain look for that one specific photo. And, that's not attainable right? Um, for most people and it's not sustainable. And that, that's the key is what can we do to sustain a healthy, vitali, vi, vi, vital lifestyle over the long haul? You know, it's, you know, our society, the media has really, you know, has really uh, give us a, um, a deceptive look of what re healthy really is. You know, we have, you know, we first started years ago. It's, you know, you, you know, you had to be paper thin in order, to, you know, that was the, the ultimate look that, you know, was healthy, you know, and, and like you said, that's a very small percentage for a very short period of time. Those girls were working, you know, over a year to get that figure. And as soon as they stopped doing what they were doing, they put the weight right back on. It's something that you have to, you know, and they were starving themselves, maybe having one Stella Doro a day and, you know, a salad and just, you know, just a, uh, an insane low amount of calories. Now you have a lot of people, you have the, the, um, you know, now the campaign that, you know, being, you know, ha being overweight is beautiful and it's okay. And then people, you know, it, a lot of times, if you look at the blood work and you look at the health, you know, that a lot of those overweight women are in danger in their health also, because it's not healthy to be overweight and it's not healthy to be paper thin either. You have to have that happy medium. And I think society is, is really losing track of what's okay. And I think we, it's what we feel is okay. You know, we are, what our blood work says and when, when we're healthy, you know, we just have to incorporate, you know, having a healthy lifestyle. And like we were talking about you, the mind, body, and soul is when it's connected, it tells us what we need. And we just need to listen to ourselves and we need to understand what our body needs and we can sustain a, a healthy weight and live a healthy and happy life. And it shows 
through your skin, through your smile, through your mentality, your focus, your clarity. It's all connected as one, don't you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I shared part of my story, you know, when I started this part of my journey, I was 40 years old and, and I had just begun my entrepreneur journey and, you know, physical fitness is tied into mental, mental fitness, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it helps. It's, it's part of helping to keep us sane, but there's a lot more that's going on under the surface that we realize. And so when it was good and great and I would, and I loved, you know, getting on the stage and empowering hundreds of women and men to, you know, engage in healthy, active lifestyle. Yeah. Um, I didn't really truly understand. I was doing it for me, but I was also doing it in service. Right. Mm -hmm. And and when you when you get, get on a stage for anyone, it's really about service is who are you inspiring? Yes. Um, and bringing them on that journey. Um, but it was also built in accountability for me. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it's so easy for women to give 100 percent of their energy away for everyone else and not keep it for themselves. Right. The so teachers teach because they love to teach, but they also gain something because it's an act of giving and service. Yes. Right. It's not a glamorous type of position. Right. People who teach and instruct and connect with other people do it out of the love of their heart. Yeah. Because there's also something inside of them that's also craving that connection mm -hmm. and, and, the, and that energetic exchange. And, you know, group fitness is a wonder, wonderful demonstration of that because you have the music and just that energetic um, attraction of other people in the room. But anyway, um, but the fitness piece, I realize now fast forward 30 years was only part of it well that's not true 30 years that's that's when I okay let's fast forward 15 years <laughs> I've been <laughs> in this fitness space for 15 years I don't want to overage myself but um but that was only one piece of it right, right. Mm -hmm. and then in the last four years I started uncovering and studying the mental fitness the yeah. mental piece of it really cleaning up my my thinking patterns and yeah. belief systems and stories and old emotions that I had been carrying around for years and years and years. Yeah. So even though that I knew how to control my body from a movement perspective, mm -hmm. and that's a word I'm very careful and intentional about using because in the fitness world, I don't even use the word exercise because even that has a trigger for a lot of people. It's like, oh, I would never do that. I can't do that. Right. It's like, well, yes. And you can move your body. Mm -hmm. What can you do? And that, and that's what I, where I come from. So, you know, we had the physical piece, the, the mental piece, the, the positive psychology. And then the last piece, and probably the most important was the spiritual fitness, mm -hmm. the connection to the soul, the learning to trust myself again, right. my gut and my intuition. And, and I'll, thankfully now that I'm 55, I'll just be transparent. I'm I'm so grateful to have done that work and in, in invested in that part of my journey because I, clearly I was one-sided. <laughs> right, right. And now I feel like I have the perfect, you know, body, mind, and spirit and a very holistic perspective on sharing what that looks like and really, again, putting pushing that easy button. Right. So. I think, you know, I, I really commend you because I, you know, I think we need people like you to really help people, you know, gain a, a momentum of, of how the proper way to journey down that, that road of, of good health. You know, it's, it's more than just losing a few pounds, you know, having a, a healthy body, like you said, it's, it's your mind, body, and soul, you know, you really need to connect with your body. And, you know, even when they talk about, quote unquote, exercise, you don't have to like be in the uh, gym for a vigorous amount of hours. And you don't have to be, you know, like the, the next, you know, Jane Fonda or, you know, or Richard Simmons, you know, all the young people listen, they're going to go, who is that? You know, but, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but you know, that. it's yeah. you, all you need is maybe, you know, for some people who, you know, are unable to really, you know, to, to exercise for a long period of time and they might have pain or that they might suffer from, you know, different illnesses or, you know, um, whatever the fact may be, just, just stretching, getting that blood flow, getting that movement going, or even walking around the block or walking around, you know, if you have, you know, like a, there's just a little bit of, of movement, you know, that blood circulation, you know, that's all you really need, you know, and, you know, and eating the proper foods, understanding what, what truly, you know, your body needs 
needs. You know, we have like a rush, rush society and everyone, you know, you see so many people eating processed foods and it's the worst thing for our bodies. And it's by retraining our life and retraining the way we do things. And, you know, that, that even helps with the mind because when you're feeding your body, you're feeding your soul. You know, it's, it's how we take care of our body affects us in all aspects of our life. You know, it's, it's, it's very important. I think, you know, that we get across to people that everything that we put in our mouth, everything, how we think it's just like retraining the brain in a sense, you know, mm -hmm. we have to kind of give ourselves a new lifestyle in order to really get to that point where you're, you're talking about, don't you think? Absolutely. And it is unlearning to relearn. Yes. Right. And, it, and it's just really pointing out an awareness that we, because we're conditioned, we're programmed and imprinted from the day we're born, right? right. To the time, to the day we, 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 you know, we come to life on this planet, we're being conditioned. And what's really been insightful doing, doing a lot of my research is how ultra conditioned we are, particularly in our Western culture and society mm -hmm. by economics um, by you know companies and corporations and and then you've got the media and television we're we're, we're bombarded with all of this and um, when we can be aware of pointing out particularly like caffeine and coffee right when you understand the history of how coffee and tea actually was introduced into our culture right. and the economics and the in the in the decision makers behind that and then people are dropping five, seven, ten dollars a day on this habit that isn't necessarily healthy and is part of the problem. Right. And it's well, it's shifting the perspective. It's like, well, I can't afford to invest in a healthy lifestyle. And yet when you evaluate and become aware of where you are spending your money and attention on, mm -hmm. we're essentially giving our control away to other corporations and old stories, old um consumerism right the commercialism yeah. it's like right. you take that that same ten dollars twelve dollars that you go buy a fast food meal go to a healthy market go to a sprouts go to a grocery store or get something that's freshly made that's prepared yes. that doesn't have anything fried or breaded or anything unpronounceable <laughs> right exactly and, and your ingredients right it's it's like let like you said let's eat real food do you really need that coffee? No, but I want it. Okay. At what expense do you, you know, do you wish to be happy and, and, um, you know, not throw your, you know, your, your blood sugar up and down and not, not, um, throw your cortisol out of whack so that your body, right. your, right. Your nervous system is constantly doing the side wave, sine wave of up and down. You know, we want that, that quick fix in that energy and then we crash. Um, and then we're looking again for that next fix or, yeah, we're, we're so um, wired tight. Then we need that sedative in the evening. Right. We need the alcohol or whatever. And it, it, these distractions come in many forms. So there's no judgment. It's just creating an awareness around what we're spending our money, time and energy supporting. Yeah, we really could be pouring that into ourselves. And I think people have to realize, too, is when you're doing that, that, you know, like the caffeine and you're getting that quick that quick fix for a short period of time. And then later on, maybe you have a glass of wine or, you know, and you're eating stuff that gives you a boost because maybe that it's full of sugar. And then later on, you're taking, you're eating foods that are kind of like related to a sedative where it brings you kind of down. You kind of open yourself to possible heart attacks and possible, you know, other illnesses that, that can occur, even panic attacks. Sometimes you just get your, your heart rate goes so up and you don't understand why. And you're, especially at our age, you know, the core, it's so common to have a high cortisol level, you know, and, you know, people have to really keep track of these things and understand the importance of it. And I think, you know, like you said, we are in an environment where you, when you grew up in a specific type of an environment and everybody's doing it, you some, you know, you automatically think that's the way of life. And it's, you know, sometimes it could be, you know, it becomes a habit. You have a regimen. Okay. When I wake up, I have my cup of coffee. Then I do this, then I do that. And it's like, it's like, how do you break the habit? You know, do you have any suggestions for people when they want to really, you know, improve their health, improve their life, but they're getting out of habits sometimes can be very challenging for many people. Yeah. Um, 
well, for, for anything, it's, it's start small, right? Baby steps. Right. I mean, crawl before you walk, before you run, before, right? It truly is yeah. that marathon. And that's a sort of a cliche term, but it, it truly is. I mean, to, to, you can transform your body. I mean, you could be a completely different person a year from now. Right. Just by exchanging some of those habits to your point. It's like creating that awareness. Um, but I also recommend starting from a place of gratitude. Yeah. For me, gratitude is like the, the, the best medicine ever. Oh, it's like, let, okay, let's, let's look at what we have now. And it's really that abundance mindset. Okay. I have a roof over my head. I have transportation. I have, um, hopefully I have a love and supportive relationship or relationships with, with people and connections. Yeah. You know, other than that, like, let's really pare it down. What do, and asking ourselves, what do I really need right now? Maybe I just need to sit still and be quiet and think and be introspective. Right. And this is where, um, giving ourselves that reset every single day Yeah. to be quiet, time to think, time to journal our thoughts, time to reflect about what do I need today and then start from there. I right? agree with you. I right? yeah. So I have I have an acronym, which is it's it's kind of, you know, it, it's cute, but it's effective. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just like the easy button. And I call it being the owner of your health and wellness. And owner is an acronym, five mm -hmm. words. Right. And so I was because I do have that health and science background, I was e really in that quite introspective moment, really able to pare it down when you have nothing else. Your body needs only five basic things to recover. Right. And when you give your body the five things, it can recover itself from, from anything. And, and again, more research and studies shows, demonstrates, um, and, I'll, and I will pull out a few statistics because statistics, I'm always studying, but I'm also advocating and education, educating. Mm -hmm. I also volunteer with AARP. So I'm also, because I'm leaning into that demographic now, I'm, I'm, I'm right. kind of like in the middle, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You know, um, but it's sustainable. And so the first one for O is, is obviously oxygen, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, breath, breath work, breathing is so underrated. Even when you go to a fitness class, you might get two minutes to, to recalm your, your heart rate and your breath. Right. But the, the power of the breath is the one thing that we own that is without it, nothing survives yes. for humans, right? Your brain can only live for four minutes without oxygen mm -hmm. before things start shutting down. And so there's a, there's a whole um community around holistic breathing and breath work and meditation and we could get i mean that that's a whole pillar in itself right and just the magic that oxygen actually does provide our body and giving ourselves when we're in that panic state just to stop pause and breathe you know yeah. and to relax the shoulders and to just the act of respiration is inspiration right to inspire right. Fill, filling the lungs inspiration <laughs> if you can think of that it's like it allows you to, to make a different decision in an instant. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. right? Because at in, any moment you can change your mind. Do I yes. choose to be in a panic and overwhelm mode? Or can I take a breath, sit and just like, okay, no, I really have this. It's not as bad as it seems, or right. here's a better solution. Um, number two is water. Um, just clean water. Don't over, <laughs> mm -hmm. don't have to overthink it. Giving your body enough water. Um, so it can function. Your right. body cannot function after, I think, two weeks, right? I think yeah. that's a, a pretty, pretty average statistic, but mm -hmm. I mean, things, things start breaking down. I mean, we, we take it for granted. You don't yeah. need, we don't need the coffees. We don't need the teas. We don't need the sodas and all the things, just water. Um, third one is nutrition. Mm -hmm. That's appropriate, right? right? Just eat real food. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not going to say abstain. I don't say to abstain or do an all or nothing type of diet and lifestyle. It's like what, what works for you um, from a scientific perspective, we know obviously eating more protein, right? That, that burns more calories, re increases our metabolism, but that's again, a whole nother segment, but just eat real food. Right. Um, and prepare it yourself. Yeah. If possible, if not hire somebody to do that for you or go to a grocery store that has it already prepared and pick it up. Right. Um, and it's going to probably cost you half of what a fast food meal is going to cost today. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. But number, number four, we've, we've had O W N O E is for exercise your options. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, yes, 
exercise, and I love to use the word movement. So mm -hmm. exercising your options means making a choice of how do I choose to move my body today? What can I do? What am I willing to do Right. to go outside for 10 minutes or maybe put on a YouTube video and march in place? Right. You no, know, and it doesn't need to be CrossFit 45 minutes a day, seven days a week. Right. And it's no. really shifting our perspective on what movement looks like. Yeah. You know, and another statistic is that, um, 14% of people 40 and older have an active lifestyle. 14%. Wow. Right. So when we're exercising our options, that's a choice. It's like, Ooh, which side of the equation do I want to be on? Right. Right. Do, do I want to be in the active lifestyle? Well, then maybe I need to put some shoes on and walk or take my dog for a walk or yeah. you know, anything. So that's exactly. another, another pillar. And so then number, number five, um, and the, none of these are in particular order of importance, except for oxygen, right? Oxygen or water are up at the mm -hmm. top, but rest and recovery, right? Yeah. Our bodies need to rest and recovery can mean a lot of things. Recovering from what? Right. Recovering from our day, recovering from emotional attachments, recovering from triggering situations that are creating that fight or flight response within us. Yeah. But, you know, the, the body does its rest and recovery when it's in a state of quiet at mm -hmm. rest. That's when it grows. That's when it, when cells um, repair, Produce, yeah, repair. Reju rejuvenation happens. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, and then we come back to a state of equilibrium when we allow our bodies to rest. We can't always be running and going all the time. And right. So it's just being super aware. It's like, do I really need to be running all the time? And I found right. myself in that state actually you know, in, in just understanding my own self-sabotaging behaviors, not yeah. giving myself time to transition between a move from one state to another, right. or, or maybe somebody has lost or, or is going through some grief and there's time for, there's an adjustment period that needs to happen. Yes. Um, otherwise we set ourselves up for burnout. Oh yeah. And that's a big issue in our country today that so many people set themselves up for burnout because they keep going and going and going and going. And just like you said, we have to rejuvenate our bodies. There's a time where we have to take, you know, have a, a time out and give our body what it needs. And even just to, to go for a walk or just do something we enjoy, you know, just take some time out because it catches up to us. So many people just don't stop. They just keep going and going and going and they have in their head, I got to pay the bills. I got to do this. I got to do that, you know, but you know, it's, you know, there's more to life than that. You know, you know, what we have on, on our planet, we can't take with us when we go to the heavens, you know? So it's really? like, you know, and we, we, t I think we take for granted too. Like, you know, we were talking about gratitude. We don't know what the next day brings. So really it's, you know, we have to just, you know, take care of ourselves, I think to the fullest and be able to actually, you know, um, live each day in the now, I think, you know, how do you feel about that li living each day in the now and just really focusing on what our body needs at that present time and taking care of ourselves in that respect? I think that's the biggest lesson that I've learned most recently is how to be super present Mm -hmm. right to really evaluate where am I is everything okay what's the one thing I need to do next what's the one thing I need right now right and to be very unapologetic about creating a boundary and boundaries around what's best for me right um you know a year and a half ago I came up with uh you know I'm going to be my own soulmate I'm going to marry myself first because in a lot yes. of society and culture, women are conditioned to give it all away. Yes. We're here to serve and nurture everyone else. And I mean, I've already explained, I'm, I'm a mom, I'm a grandmother. I've been on that journey, been there, done that. Right. And, and yes, there's been multiple times in my life where I've been in the place of burnout that I didn't need to be because, but I didn't know any better. So right. when we know better, we do better. There's no judgment. It's like, okay, well, Judgment in comparison places us in a low energetic vibe of shame, guilt, blame, mm -hmm. right? And that yes. is, we, and now we're talking about energetics and a little bit of quantum physics. So yeah, um, there, there's a balance. And, and I'm also very careful of who I have conversations with because I don't want to really take them so far out of understanding. I want to meet them where they are in their level of understanding. Right. But I understand science, how science works. I understand how the body works. I understand how we can reprogram um, 
our synapses in our brain mm -hmm. and truly create a whole new life and a story and a new image yeah. of ourselves and what it is we really want to be. Right. You know, the, today is not the same Chris Dyer that was alive five years, 10 years, 30 years ago. Right. And, and I love always consistently upgrading that image of myself. That's, that's an inside job. Nobody can do it but ourselves. No, I agree with you. And, and I really feel like, you know, you really have to really focus on yourself and put yourself first before you, you put anybody else. Cause I see some, especially young mothers and so many people, they worry about everybody else except for themselves. And then they end up burning out and they end up, you know, falling into depression and, and because they have spent their whole life serving everyone, but themselves. And I think it's so important because how can you care for somebody else if you don't care for yourself first and you don't make sure that you're, you know, at that point where you are strong enough mentally, physically, and spiritually to be able to handle and help others. You know, I, I think that's very important too. Well, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because, and, and this is something that I sort of forget to mention, and yet it, it, it has a purpose and maybe this part of our conversation will help empower someone to make a change mm -hmm. for the better for themselves. So, you know, through being a mother, um, I actually, there were three times in my life where I actually shut down, broke down mm -hmm. and, you know, my, my energy was at the lowest, you know, I thought yeah. I was having those negative thoughts thinking, well, maybe the world would be better off without me. Right. And I actually broke down and had an anxiety attack um, back in 2002 Mm -hmm. And that's when I began my 17 year, I don't want to call it addiction, but I was addicted to antidepressants for mm -hmm. 17 years. I survived doing what I needed to do because of anti antidepressants, because it allowed me to function because yeah. I didn't know really how to give myself the self, self care that I needed. Yes, I could go work out. I could be fit and help other people, mm -hmm. but I truly wasn't getting the whole picture. I was right. surviving right? Yeah. And so it was really when I started doing the mental fitness piece of it and um, changing my stories and my beliefs that I made a decision, even though I had tried multiple times to break that yes. um, crutch. Mm -hmm. and, and two weeks into being without the antidepressants, I was telling myself, well, gosh, I like myself better when I'm on them because I can function, right? And I can just be uh, in, a, in a monotone state of being, right? right. I wasn't getting triggered by emotions, you know, up high, down low. And that for me really wasn't being truly authentic. I wasn't allowing myself to feel the feels to process yeah. real life because I needed to show up and function and be a good mom and be a wife and, you know, be a this and a that. And so, yeah, four years ago is when I did the the mental fitness and the work and in, in, in retraining my brain and really truly trusting myself again Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a process, it is. Um, but yeah, I, I, I broke that need to be dependent on antidepressants. I think and, that's so good. You know, so. so many people, you know, like our society is prescription happy, you know, yeah. and a lot of times if you get the right help, you know, not everybody needs to be on antidepressants, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, some people can, you know, get off of it, you know, because it, it sometimes, you know, living life and, and feeling emotionless is, is not such a great thing. You know, I, I you know, when, when I had my daughter, I, I was in postpartum depression and my doctor temporarily put me on antidepressants for a while until my, until I can just get back to my old self but I didn't like the way I felt because I didn't have any emotions. I was like, you said, I was surviving, but I wasn't thriving. And, then, you know, I think so many people, you know, if they take the time to heal themselves naturally, they can get to that point where they can learn how to thrive without the usage of antidepressants. And I'm not saying all, but, you know, a lot of people, you know, if they, if they retrain their bodies, their mind, their soul, they can, you know, they, they might be able to get off those antidepressants and actually live a life without antidepressants. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's interesting because some of the clients that I've worked with one in particular, you know, it's like, well, the insurance is supporting <laughs> this culture. Well, we'll, we'll pay your copay to go 
the multiple therapist and your and your your pay for your medication and it's like well you're still giving your control to someone else yeah when ultimately if you we can really look at the emotional causes the, the soul searching causes as to why we have that dependency on a medication or i mean we we know for a fact that through you know proper diet and lifestyle that people can release their dependency on even um, heart medications blood pressure medications diabetic right, right? we can mm-hmm. totally heal ourselves from a physical standpoint but the same also goes for our mental standpoint yes like who mm-hmm. do you want to have control do you yes. want to take that control for yourself and just do the work put in the time and, and be totally real and authentic and in control or are we going to allow someone to have that control over us for years, decades, however, and right. that might be somebody's story. Again, there's no shame, judgment, again, um, blame, but what if, right. What if I could take control of my health and wellness? Yeah. Now, what do you, you know, what, you know, if people want to start working, you know, we talked about baby steps, if people want to start retraining their mind, their body and their soul, and they want to really start to transform their lives, what tips do you have for these people? Like, how can they begin? Where do they start? It's all about, well, and, and I always say any, any great coach would say the answers are already within, mm-hmm. right? Yes. They're just like jewels in a treasure chest. They're mm-hmm. there. They're yeah. ready to be uncovered. It's a matter of doing, you can dig yourself, you can get some shovels and, and, and like pry up all the dirt and the sediment and all those, <laughs> yeah. all the, all the things, the rocks laying on top of that treasure chest lid, but you don't have to do it alone. Get yeah. someone to help you yeah. ask the right questions, do the deep dive. Mm-hmm. What's interesting is once you start, it's, it's also, it, it can actually be quite addictive in itself that self-discovery it's like oh when you find something that lights you up that you really know in your soul resonates with you yeah you know that's the right answer you know right. that's your spirit and soul being guided in the right direction mm-hmm. and that journey is completely unique for every single soul walking on this earth yeah i don't have the answers but i have some amazing questions and also utilize some theta healing mm-hmm. techniques um, to help get into those subconscious thoughts that are, that are lingering and we all have them. Oh yeah. Um, and then the more, the more that you start revealing, the more exciting it becomes. It's, um, you're, you're, you're getting closer to finding and coming back to who you were on the day you were born. We're right. all born whole. We're all born with the answers within us the day we arrive on this planet. And yeah, it's all the conditioning and, and, Essentially, it's a type of hypnotism, right? Mm -hmm. All these programs that we're taught, oh, you're this, you're that, you have to do. That's actually a hypnotherapy. It's conscious hypnotherapy that we're actually holding on to and believing in our subconscious. Right. So it's it's not (laughs) woo-woo. It it really is that taping and imprinting, and it can come from generations before us as well. Yeah. And I think also, too, is, is when you're sometimes, you know, for some people, they're raised a certain way and they don't want to disappoint their either their parents or this one or that one. And they feel that they're obligated to live a certain way. You know, some people are closed minded and, and, you know, sometimes you have to give yourself a chance to open your, the box the, and, and you know, and try different things and and, you know, explore within you, you know, because there is an amazing person inside us. And, you know, we could let that, that person out. And it's just taking the time to understand who we are and taking the time to love ourselves and love our body and love and to, and to feed our body with the necessary things that we need, I think. Yeah. I, um, do you ever study Dr. Bruce Lipton? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, fabulous book, the biology of belief. Um, is this really helped bring it around full circle for me? Um, you know, our genetic makeup, who we are is, or what, what happens in our body really, we, we really can only give eight to 10% of the credit to our genetics. Mm-hmm. Right. So the right. rest, the, the 90 to the 92% is environment. Yes. Right. Which really does state that we really ultimately have the control over our genetics. Yeah. And what's, what's interesting is 
some people grow up through life thinking, well, my parents looked like this, they behave like this. So this is naturally what I'm going to be and do. And right. And that's not the case. They can no. make different choices to change that, which they think they, they're basing it on genetics. And, you know, I, I, I never knew my father. Okay. So there's half of my genetics. I have no clue about. Right. Um, and then, you know, on my mother's side of the family, there's um, high blood pressure, high cholesterol and pre-diabetes. Mm-hmm. What's interesting is, and, and let's go back. I only started when I was 40. Right. I do not identify with any of those diagnoses because of decisions I made even at 40 years old. Right. Right. So what if you're 50? What if you're 60? Can you reverse your thinking about your, your genetic code? What if you didn't know your parents? Right. You would get to create an identity that is totally unattached to something you grew up believing. Yes. So I, I've, that is that is my belief system that we really truly do have more control. We do. And we give ourselves credit for, and we're so mm-hmm. conditioned to giving that away, to spending money on other sources, other solutions, other quick fixes. It's like, no, everybody, it's everybody's responsibility to heal themselves. Yes, I agree a hundred percent. And you could change at any age. It's just you being willing to want to change because that's, that's the key. You have to want to change. And once you're willing to change, anything is possible. And where, where can we find you on, cause I know you have a website. Where can people find you if they want to learn more about you and what you do? No, thank you. Um, Chris Dyer consulting is my website. Um, I am on social media platforms, Facebook, uh, Chris Dyer. I'm on LinkedIn and also on Instagram, Chris Dyer consulting. Um, I don't do much with Twitter for me. Twitter is another distraction that I don't feel like I need in my life right now. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I've toyed with it. So I, I really stick with just a couple of the platforms and I am active and I do um, do a lot of speaking. Um, I have published two books and have several more in the works. Okay, well, excellent. But uh, yeah, just uh, getting more more bold myself. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're all in a process of evolving and growing into. Um, but really, it's, it's sort of fascinating, Stacey, that I've really started, like I said, I've uncovered come back full 360 yeah. on who I am and, and how I can really inspire and create impact for other people in the world among the other things that I do right um, what is going to create the most impact let's let's help people teach them how to get healthy yeah and how to own their health and wellness mm-hmm. and become a little bit of a disruptor in that industry yes and that's what you want to do that's yeah. what you definitely want to do now, uh, before we go, tell us a little about your two books that you have published right now that are out on the market. Uh, well, both of them are compilation books, and which is a great way to start if you're aspiring. Um, you want to be a writer. You don't really, you don't really know what to do, but you know you have a story that's meant yeah. to be told. And so, um, the first one was two years ago. It was in a jumpstart your blank series. Um, um, a business coach um, invited me to participate. So, jumpstart your radiant lifestyle was the chapter that I that I shared and it talked about the again jump the the jump start into my my fitness mm-hmm. and that part of my health and wellness while being a mom while raising teenagers while also creating uh, a business as an entrepreneur but also realizing something was missing yeah I needed to give myself time for me and just start moving my body because again it's as much phys- uh, mental as it is physical right but but it was actually the, the beginning of my journey of this yeah. this next 15 years and then adding adding the new piece of the mental fitness and the spiritual fitness so we're we're never we're never done you're yeah. you're never done growing and changing and discovering about yourself and that's that's the magical part you're you'll you'll yes. we'll never know all there is to know <laughs> that's true that's very true now where can they find your books um on amazon mm-hmm. um the the second one i wrote was the Cinderella monologues also on Amazon. Okay. But um actually have a couple of my own self-study study DIY programs in the works. Excellent. Um, help, helping people um, get healthy and, and take take ownership mm-hmm. and, and removing the stigma and the stereotype of what being healthy looks like. It's just like success. You can define success on your own terms. What does it mean to be successful? Right. But at the same time, 
we can define what health and wellness, our own health and wellness means and looks like. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's not on the glory pages of a glossy magazine. I can tell you that. <laughs> oh yeah. I agree. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So but before we, oh, go ahead. No, it's, it's, it's about deciding who you want to be and create yeah. that person. And right. I like what you said, you know, like there's never, it's never too late to change. Mm-hmm. You know, some people think I'm too old, but it's never too late. Even when I made some huge changes in my life and I, and I went and I, I took some classes. I'm like, oh, maybe I'm too old for this. And I went in and everyone was my age or older. And I was laughing to myself. Here I was, you know, worried about, you know, but you know, maybe it's too too late to make some changes and and to try new things, you know, and And they were a bunch of people my age, you know, doing the same thing that felt the same way I did. You know, it's never too late. It's never Mm -hmm. too late. Very true. Yeah, we we can we can choose in a moment, in an instant, to make a different choice. Yeah. Now, if you create a new awareness, yeah. Yeah. If if you have a couple tips you'd like to share before we go. Um, I'd love to hear maybe a few things you could tell our audience, you know, that, you know, is that you feel is important that they need to know, especially if they're interested in trying to improve their life and transform their life. Um, Again, start with gratitude and remembering owner, the acronym Mm -hmm. Mm O-W-N-E-R. We talked about oxygen, water, nutrition, exercising your options, rest and recovery. Mm -hmm. You give your body those five things, you are 85% better in the population, right? Of what healthy wellness looks like. Right. Right. When we talked about the recovery, what are we holding on to? What is that excess baggage we're carrying around? Maybe we've been carrying it around for decades. Yeah. When we learn to unpack it and realize that some of that baggage wasn't intended for us to carry in the first place. And here we are lugging it around. Yeah. That's very (laughs) true. It's, it's how can I help someone have peace, health, and happiness? And right. all three of those are absolutely an inside job. That is absolutely every individual's responsibility to make peace, create their health, and ultimately decide what makes them happy and, and do that every single day yeah. without fail, especially on your busiest days. That's when you right. need it the most. And remember that. That's an excellent point. I like that. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. You know, thank you. I, I think you shared some really great information today that are going to help a lot of people. So thank you so much for coming on the show and, and, and sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you, Stacey. I appreciate it. All right. You have a great day. You too.